Hello everyone, this is John from Sound Reaction. I'm back and this time I'm using a microphone. So I thought I would revisit one of the more popular videos and see if we can just clean it up a little bit and make it sound a little better. Um, what I'd like to demonstrate in this video is how we can loop clips uh, without using um, auto follow actions uh, like we would see here. Um, what I'd like to do instead is to set up MIDI clips uh, so that the MIDI clips are in turn triggering the scenes. And to do that, we need to start with some audio. So I have a blank session here. I'm going to call this song and I'm going to call this track MIDI triggers or MIDI trigs. And the first thing we need to do is a little tempo mapping and uh, get our audio imported so that it uh, f uh, is time aligned so that when we trigger a scene, it is happening on a downbeat and not just at some random time. So uh, I'm going to start by hitting tab and coming into my session. And I'm going to bring in my audio file now, if I can find it. Okay, I've located my audio, so I'm just going to go ahead and click my audio file and bring it into my audio track. I'm just going to drop it on the timeline anywhere I please, and we'll clean this up here now. Uh, the first thing I like to do is um, double-click my uh, region and just make sure that warp is turned off. Uh, if warp is turned on, that's going to mess with our tempo settings. And uh, I want to be in control of the tempo the entire time. So let's start by taking a quick listen. Okay, uh, so audio is playing. I'm going to find the beginning of the song. And um, it looks like the beginning of the song starts somewhere about here. But just to uh, make sure I get exactly where I want to be, I'm going to start by right-clicking and turning my fixed grid to off. What this does is it allows me to click and drag uh, without any uh, sort of quantization uh, or snapping to the grid. If I were in uh, one bar fixed grid, I would be limited to only moving one bar at a time, but we're not there yet because we haven't uh, set our tempo. So we're going to start with uh, turning the grid off. I'm going to listen for a downbeat, and I can see one here. And I have found that downbeat. I'm just going to zoom in and uh, place my cursor as close as I can to that zero crossing point uh, so that we can avoid any clicks and pops. And I'd say that's pretty close right there. So Command E from this point is going to separate our region. I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to delete what we don't need before the downbeat just to give us a nice clean starting point and we'll have a listen just to make sure. Yeah, in fact, uh, we found the downbeat, and uh, now we can start putting this on the grid. Um, the next important thing to do is to put it on a downbeat of your grid, uh, sp uh, specifically at the beginning of a measure. So we've got measures up here, uh, measure 35, 36, 37. I'm going to slide this over to 35, but uh, this isn't very accurate at this point because we're still in fixed grid off. I'm going to turn this to one bar by right-clicking and selecting one bar. Now when I select my uh, region, I can snap to the one bar, in this case, measure 35, and we'll have a listen. Good. Um, now, I know this song isn't at 120, but just to confirm it, I'm going to turn my click on. And I wish I could adjust the... Uh, uh, level of the click, but I can't. So uh, just watch your ears here as I hit start. And 
And I think it's pretty obvious that uh, the click is not in a line with the rhythm of the song. In this example, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way uh, to find the rhythm. Uh, we're going to start by uh, clicking and dragging on our tempo field here. And when I do that, it's going to appear that the waveform is shrinking or growing. Uh, but in fact, it's the grid in the background of the waveform shrinking or expanding. But it's not really here nor there. Um, so uh, let's just have a listen here at 130 beats per minute. And that's not right. Uh, what I will do now is listen without the click and find the downbeat of my second bar. So one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. So right about here uh, is the downbeat of my second bar, which means it needs to line up with the downbeat of measure 36 in this case, which is one bar after 35, making it my second bar. Uh, I'm going to click and drag and on the tempo area until this transient of the waveform lines up. So click and drag with this bar, and we're close, and now we're on. Uh, I do happen to know that this song is 109 BPM, so I'm kind of cheating, but I did figure it out the hard way uh, by clicking and dragging. But now let's listen with the click. Good, and we're in alignment. Uh, once we're in alignment, we can turn our click off. That's fine. Uh, we're ready to uh, we're ready to go. Uh, if we wanted our song to start here, we can just uh, click hold and press tab to bring it into its own clip slot on my song track. And now, when I fire either the clip slot or the master scene containing that clip. I'm going to start on the downbeat. Um, all right, but let's get into the heart of what we're looking at doing, which is triggering loops with MIDI notes inside the session. So the first thing I'm going to do is go back to, or the next thing I'm going to do is go back to arrangement view, and uh, I'm going to turn off my back to arrangement so that I can listen from this uh, window while I work. Uh, if we're going to create a loop, we need to identify a loop. And uh, so let's just pick one and we'll make cuts. All right, so this is a good four bar loop here. Uh, I'm just going to place my cursor at the downbeat and hit Command E to separate. I'll go four bars later and place my cursor at the end of this uh, four measure loop and hit Command E. And now I've got my loopable sectioned section. I'm just going to rename this first section intro. Uh, the loop, I'm just going to rename loop. And the rest, I'm just going to call outro. Now what we can do, I'm just going to remove what we did previously, is bring these clips into arrangement view. So click, hold, hit tab, bring it into its own clip slot, tab back, click your loop section, click, hold, hit tab, Bring it into your clip slot. Back to arrangement view. Click, hold, tab, etc. Now, when I hit play on each of these sections, they all start on downbeats. Uh, and they all start on downbeats because we took the time initially to cut this on the measures. Um, now, if you're only working with one song, uh, when you make a tempo adjustment up here, it's going to carry over to uh, session view, uh, just like it was in arrangement view. But it is possible that you have many different songs at many different tempos. So maybe uh, your session tempo is defaulted to 120. And uh, 
we want to override that. So if I click and hold, I'm in Ableton 11. If I click and hold the left side of my master clip slot and drag, I get the tempo pane. And I'm just going to type in uh, 109 for each clip uh, master scene. And what that does is when this master scene is fired, it's going to override my session tempo to 109. So here we go. <laughs> And we can see the tempo has now been overridden to 109. Uh, so now we're in time. We have our music starting at downbeats. Um, how are we going to control the loop, uh, this four bar loop? Well, I'm gonna set up a MIDI track, which I have here called MIDI Triggers. And uh, I'm gonna set the, it doesn't need a MIDI input. Uh, but it does need a MIDI output. And in this case, we want to use our IAC driver bus, uh, which is the internal uh, audio bus uh, for routing MIDI uh, from to and from the operating system and your DAW. If you've not set that up in the past, uh, search for audio MIDI. It's called audio MIDI setup. You'll need to go to your view or window and show MIDI Studio. And you wanna make sure your IAC driver is active. You can double click on it, tell it, give it a name, tell it that the device is online and apply. Mine's already on, so we don't need to do this. Uh, back to the session. Uh, on my clip slot containing the loop, I'm going to right click and say, insert empty MIDI clip. Um, I'm just going to give this a color. That's my dog, other than brown, I think. No, I'll worry about that later. Yeah, okay, red. Red's a nice color. Um, and uh, what we need to know is how long is this clip? Uh, in session view, this doesn't help us very much. Uh, it gives us a start time and end time, but it doesn't really work in a musical sense uh, of measures and beats. Uh, so let's go back to arrangement view by hitting tab. We're going to select our loop region. And if, as I hover over the loop region down here in this section, it'll give me some information. It's telling me that it's starting at bar 49, it's ending at bar 53, and it gives me a total length of four bars. With that information, I can go back to my uh, arrangement session view, double click my empty MIDI clip, and now I can set this MIDI clip to be four bars. So it's going to start at bar one, and it's gonna end at bar five. And if I zoom out, or here, we'll give it a length of four bars. Now I can zoom out and I can see bar one, bar two, bar three, and bar four. Um, I'm going to place a MIDI note starting at the very bottom of my uh, piano roll here at C negative two, uh, anywhere between uh, bar four and the start of bar four and the end of bar four. In this case, I'm just going to uh, choose bar four beat two. And I'm going to double click uh, my MIDI note, and I've now inserted a MIDI note of C negative two uh, at bar 4.2. The reason I've chosen bar 4.2 is because I'm using a global quantization of one bar. And that means that when this MIDI, tr sorry, when this MIDI clip is triggered, uh, MIDI note is triggered, it's going to wait until the downbeat of the next bar to fire. Um, and just to make sure I have this set up correctly, I'm going to go to this triggers tab, and I'm going to set the quantization to one bar, and I'm also going to set the quantization of the audio clip in this case, loop to one bar as well. That's gonna guarantee everything uh, falls on a downbeat. Uh, cool, so I have this, but it's not really helping us very much. 
until I assign it to a scene. So what I need to do is I need to tell Ableton to play this note. And when it plays this note, I need to MIDI map it to the scene it's on. So it's going to fire, but not going to do anything. Uh, another note. Uh, I'm going to go back to my clip. I'm going to turn loop off. We don't need to loop round and round on this MIDI clip. Uh, to MIDI map, what you want to do is first go into MIDI mode, select your clip. In this case, it's the master scene containing the loop. And... Um, one little caveat here is you have to start the MIDI clip <laughs> before you get into MIDI map mode because you don't really have control once you're in MIDI map uh, mode. So I'm just going to fire this scene and go to MIDI map mode. Now I'm going to click my master scene and wait for it to map. And there it goes. So now I can exit MIDI map mode. We see that on channel one, C negative two was mapped to scene two. Now it's really as simple as hitting play on the scene and it should go round and round forever. And it does. Now if we want to get out of this loop, all we have to do is mute this track. And in our case, uh, there's no other command set up. It doesn't know what to do. Uh, so let's do that next. Um, on this scene containing the loop, we know it's four bars. Oh, and let me just clean this up a little bit. I'm going to rename this MIDI clip uh, four, uh, one bar of four, four. It's actually four bar. Uh, it's actually four bars in 4-4. Four, four. Um, and I'm also going to tell it that it's at note C negative 2. This is just a little cleanup. It helps me stay organized. Back to what I was saying. Uh, after this scene completes, I want it to automatically advance to the outro scene. So I'm going to click, double click the number on the loop master scene, and that's going to bring up my auto follow actions. Uh, I'm going to turn follow actions on. And the next thing I'm going to do is tell it an action time to take the next action. In this case, we know it's four measures later. So click four. And now let's play this, and after four measures, it should advance. And it does, and it does so in time because our we're cut to the grid and we have our tempo set at 109. Um, uh, just to prove that this works... Uh, Either way, I'm going to turn this track back on, which means that this MIDI note is now active. And uh, with this MIDI note active, it's going to uh, force it to loop. So here we go. This is armed, but it's uh, not going to do anything. And we're looping and looping. And when we're ready to move on, we're going to unmute this track and it'll move on. Go. So that's a quick example of how to use uh, internal MIDI triggers to trigger a scene loop. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll be creating more videos, so go ahead and subscribe. And if you have uh, recommendations for other videos, uh, techniques, and tips that you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments, and I will be sure to address them. Thank you.